Today I'm going to make my first wet palette. I will show you how I make it and I will tell you my first impressions after painting a miniature with it. With my last miniature that I was painting, he was wearing a, a big cloak and I was painting the cloak from a darker to a lighter color. So I was using a lot of very thin layers of paint to build up to a lighter color. When I was doing that, I actually had a bit of a trouble of keeping my paints very thin and uh, moist. I had trouble with uh, not letting my paint dry out. One of the paints did actually dry out. The good thing was it was not that much of a trouble because I was painting with colors straight out of the bottle. Imagine if I was mixing different colors to slowly build up to a color and then in the middle of that your paint dries out. That would be so much trouble to remix the colors at the moment that you are to keep finishing, for example, a cloak that you're painting. So because of the trouble and the good things that I've heard about the wet palette, I figured I would give it a try. The wet palette will help you with the consistency of your paints, at least that is what they say. I'm currently using a, a dry palette, so I'm getting a bit of uh, paint on the dry palette, adding some water, mixing it well, and then, then I will paint with this uh, thin layers of paint. But over time the water will actually evaporate out of the paint and the paint will start to be uh, thicker. To prevent the paint from uh, drying out or be too thick for me to paint, I will add again a bit of water and mix that well. So every time I will have that difference between thinner and thicker paint. The wet palette will keep moisturizing your paints so you won't have that problem as much. Also another tip that I hear from a lot of pro painters is that it's very, 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 very important to thin down your paint and that most painters, like me probably, are not thinning down their paints enough. And also the wet palette will help with that because it will keep moisturizing your paints so you have thinner layers of paints, but it will also make it easier to keep painting with these thinner layers. So we will need a few things to make the wet palette. The first thing you will need is something to function as the wet palette. You will need something that is watertight. For example, most people have these uh, plastic uh, containers at home to normally store sandwiches or food. These would be perfect. You can also use a plate or anything else. I have actually bought this uh, wet palette. It's called the PK Pro Wet Palette. It costs four euros and 69 cents. I bought it at the same shop I am buying my uh, miniature paints. I saw it there, it was pretty cheap, so I bought it. The advantage here is it's pretty uh, thin. It's not so high as this one, as you can see here. So when I'm painting, I can easily access it and go to my water and wet tile. That's why I like it. I've also modified it a bit because when you buy this one, the lid, the top lid and the bottom lid will actually be attached to each other. I just got a hobby knife and carefully just cut between the two lids and uh, now I can separate them. You really don't have to do that. That's just my preference. So if you have something for the wet palette, the next thing you will need is, uh, for example, paper towel or kitchen towel. I'm gonna use this. I already have this at home. You probably have this at home. Especially as a miniature painter, I cannot go without this. So I always have paper towel at my house. To go above the paper towel, you will need a baking paper. I also already have this at home. It's uh, pretty thin and uh, there's pretty uh, a lot of it. Uh, I already have it because I sometimes bake cookies, but if you don't bake cookies or don't have it at home, uh, you can pretty much easily buy it at uh, a grocery shop. I have the box right here. I bought this one. This one has uh, some pictures of it, of cookies. Most of them have it. I've seen some with pictures of uh, like mini pizzas. Just make sure it's baking uh, paper. It says here baking paper. It's in Dutch, but it's baking paper. It has 20 sheets in it. And this cost me uh, 66 cents. So pretty cheap for all that baking paper. 
Then after that, you probably need a scissor to cut the baking paper uh, at least at the correct size and also maybe the, the kitchen towel. Instead of the kitchen towel, you can also use a sponge and cut that at the correct size, but I don't have a sponge and I do have the paper towel, so I'm gonna use that. Um, so after we've made the wet palette, all you need more is uh, some water. I'm gonna use some uh, regular tap water. Now let's go to my desk and I will show you how I make it. So I have everything here that I will need to make uh, the wet palette. I have the wet palette, a paper towel, the scissor, a glass with some tap water, it's regular tap water, uh, the baking paper, I already made a smaller piece of that to use immediately later on. So first I'll start by getting two pieces of the paper towel. One, two. Well, the paper towel is pretty big, so I'm gonna fold it in half and see if it will fit the wet palette better. And that is one. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the other one. So, there we go. I'm gonna get the palette. Mm, well, as you can see, the palette is still too big, so I'm actually gonna cut the paper towel. Um, I can see through the wet palette and I have this nice grid in the background so I can just get an approximate measurement and see how big it is. It's one, two, and a bit, one, two, three big ones. Okay, and three small ones. So the paper towel I just folded. I'm gonna cut in approximately the same size so that it will fit nicely into my wet palette. One, two, three. Okay, then I put the excess aside. I do the same for the other side. One, two. Okay. I just do it approximately uh, and actually a bit less than that because I think the paper will uh, extend a bit with the water but we will see okay so that's nice and cut don't need a scissor anymore I get the wet palette put it inside oh that actually fits pretty nice so that is neat I'm not sure if you need this but I like things to fit nice and neat uh, in here I'll get the water I'll make the paper towel wet. Alright, there we go. Just gonna check if everything is wet. Yes. Just gonna press it a bit. See if I have any excess. I still need a bit more in the corner. There we go. Okay, in the excess, I'm gonna check if I have a lot of it to pour back. No, it looks fine. Okay, I got the baking paper. I already cut this in also probably the same size because this is gonna make a lot of noise and take me a bit longer. I'm gonna start with the, uh, with the curly part and the other part. No, I'm just gonna start with the normal part. Make sure both sides are wet. Just gonna rub my finger, make the back side wet, and then trying to get the baking paper. There we go. And turn it the other side. Just gonna make the paper go a bit more straight so my paints will fit nicely on it. Oh, the corner. Okay, and that is it. So I'm gonna paint a miniature. I already have him right here. And I'm gonna use the wet palette for it. And I'll tell you how that goes and what I think of it. I have now painted my first miniature with the wet palette. Let me see if I can quickly give you a closer look. 
So he's fully painted and just done. Really like him. When I was starting with the wet palette, I was actually struggling a bit. I was not sure um, how to use the wet palette, what it would do with my paints or how thin my paints would be. So when I first started painting, obviously I start just with some basic base colors. So that really helped me just to see how the paint would work and uh, what it would do. I was actually really worried that uh, paints on the wet palette would like bleed to each other. So I'm using a dry palette now and I have a dry palette that has uh, different socks, uh, sockets that I can put my paint. So for example, in this socket, I can put the black for example and the black will stay in there. And then next to it, I can use the brown color and there is no way these colors could bleed. But obviously the wet palette is just, um, it's just one wet palette. So there is no dividers between the paints. I did put different kind of paints next to each other that I didn't want to mix and they didn't bleed out or mix in the whole process. So I was really surprised and happy about that. I painted the miniature uh, the first day for a few hours. And I was actually surprised if at any point of the painting process, uh, like I made a mistake or I just had to retouch or I saw something that I forgot to paint or anything that was going on. And I wanted to go back to a color that I've previously used. Uh, I could do that at any point. I was really surprised. Normally when I'm painting and you know, I take a while, uh, the all the other colors, you know, start to dry out and I cannot use them anymore. So if I make a mistake, I have to get that color again, get a bit of paint again and then retouch it. So I'm wasting, you know, a lot of paint. But with the wet palette, if I saw something, oh, I need to retouch this. I just go back to that older color that I've used and I could use it perfectly fine. So that was really nice. I was really surprised about that. Also, I've heard really good stories about the consistency of the paint with the wet palette, but I had no idea. I, was like, I always was like, yeah, okay, but you know, I can just add a bit more water to my dry palette and you know, that works for me. But with the wet palette, wow, the consistency was amazing. Like I used it the first day, I put it in the fridge, I got it out. Some colors, I just had to mix the colors again to get the, uh, you know, the colors that they were. But I could just use them like that. I barely added extra water to the paints, so that was really nice. And they were still very nice thin paints that I've done, you know, the first time. Then after the second day, I uh, painted the miniature again for a bit. I put the wet palette in the fridge again. And then I started painting the miniature like five days later and all the paints were still fine. I could use every color that I made or that I've mixed and that I've used. So I was really surprised how well your paints stay within the wet palette and how the consistency stays. Just barely had to add any extra water to it. When I did get the wet palette out of the fridge, uh, on the corners of the wet palette, I did just add just a little bit more water to keep you know, the, water, uh, the wet palette moist and wet. And it, it didn't look like it really needed that because the wet palette was still wet, but I just did that just to get some extra water in and it worked perfectly fine. My first impressions of the wet palette are really positive. I enjoyed painting with it a lot. It was easy to do. Uh, it was easy to build. Anybody can make that. Um, I really don't have any negatives right now. I didn't have any negative experience. The main thing was would my paints bleed? That didn't happen. I could use any paint at any point. It's just easy and convenient actually. So I think I will keep on using it and just keep on practicing to get better with it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments below. Are you using a wet palette? What do you think? Do you like it? Let me know.